afternoon. This is June Adams, CEO of PowerCalc, and welcome to PowerCalc's webinar on our just launched automatic real-time one-line diagram, voltage drop, vault current calculation, and AIC ratings. Today we're going to be demonstrating PowerCalc using a mid-rise residential project. It's great to have all of you with us today, and we actually have quite a few attendees, so we're going to ask that you hold your questions and comments until after uh, the presentation. There'll be lots of time to, to ask, and we're happy to we look forward to answering them. So here's James, Electrical PE, President of PowerCalc and its inventor. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. This is James Khalil. Uh, the project that we're going to be working on is the same project that uh, we used for the other webinars. It's that Middle, uh, middle River uh, project. So uh, I access the project list and then I click on the project to open that particular project. The first thing you're going to see is the project information to make sure that you are, uh, you know, that's the project that you are going to be working on. So here's the project name and, and it's the Middle River testing. Uh, that's what we have been using. To uh, look at, to start the, the, the project, uh, you click on the control panel. You see here is the power distribution uh, tree, basically, uh, and all the panels that associated with this particular project. But if we started from scratch, you wouldn't see any of these blue uh, buttons and red buttons. To add a panel, you click on the panel board plus sign. You see now it's in the process to add panel number 15, which is a blank panel. Uh, you can go ahead and rename that panel. Uh, so we'll say uh, LA, make more cap, LA3 uh, enter. And then you go and uh, identify the panel, whether it's a new or existing. So there's a pull down menu for you here, whether it's a modified, existing or new. We're gonna keep it on new. And you select where is it fed from. So we're gonna uh, feed this panel from MDP. It will give you a list of all the available circuits to connect that particular panel to the distribution system. So I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, circuit number three and submit. Now that panel became part of the power distribution system and is connected to MDP. Later on, if we want to change where is it connected to, we can all, always can do that. Now to set up the panel, go to the control panel, pull down menu, and then on the uh, right side of the, the uh, power distribution uh, tree here uh, is the functions that, that you can perform uh, in that panel or with that panel. So we're going to set up that panel that we have two wizards uh, that are very important in the setup and inputting the circuits. The first one is the panel module setup wizard. Click on that. It will open a window for you, which is the panel board module. And it has, I believe, the seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ribbons. Uh, and you notice that some of these uh, setups are set on auto. If it's a start of a, of a project, you can leave all these on auto and the system, as you input this circuit by circuit into the panel, it will adjust these values for you and display the appropriate uh, information associated with it. Uh, so the, to set up that panel, really all, the, all you need is to set up the voltage and the number of poles. Uh, so this, the default value is 208, 120, three phase. Uh, let's assume that this one is going to be a, a 208, but it's going to be a, a single phase since it's a residential. Let's go ahead and uh, click on single phase. And then to set up the number of poles, go to the panel board features. Poles is set, the default is six. Let's go ahead and make them 30 spaces. Of course, you can always come back if you have more than 30 circuits, you can go back and adjust the number of poles and click on calculate. So this panel here now is set up and is ready for you to input circuit by circuit the three values that we always ask for uh, in order for the system to function. Uh, the three values are the load KVA, 
So let's say that circuit number one is 1.5 kVA. And then the third, uh, the second value is the number of poles. You go ahead and select from the pull down menu. If you notice here, it only gave you two selections, one and two single pole or two pole circuits because the panel was, or, uh, was preset on a single phase. So the only available uh, circuits or poles are two poles. So it already uh, displayed that for you. So we're gonna say it's a single pole. The third uh, input value would be the type of load, which we call it the MAC load, as a macro for the load. And let's assume this is going to be a receptacle. So you select R for receptacles. Uh, and since, let's say, maybe this is the master uh, bedroom receptacles. Uh, so this way, and then you go ahead and uh, uh, click on calculate. It will populate the information about the circuit uh, based on these three input that you have selected uh, the, from the trip on the uh, circuit breaker and all the branch circuit parameters. At the same time, it actually started the calculating the feeder for you to uh, provide the, the power uh, associated with that one circuit. Now, that was method number one to input. You can actually input these three inputs on the panel schedule itself, circuit by circuit. There is an easier way uh, to do that. It would be the, through the wizard. So control, uh, click on control panel. You go to the second wizard, the branch circuit inputs. Again, you will have a, uh, a window to populate with the circuits. So the identification here is the panel LA3. That's the new panel that we set up. Excuse me. And then the circuit number is one, and that's the one that we input, uh, I guess, manually on the panel schedule. And it was master bedroom, one and a half uh, KVA, single pole, and the load types are, and here's the circuit uh, parameters. So now we're gonna go ahead and fill up circuit number two or three. I'm gonna just go ahead and select number three, so we'll just stay on the same side of the panel. So circuit number three, load description, let's say restroom. Load KVA is 1.2. And then the number of poles, a single pole. The load type is R. And then you can go ahead and go to the next circuit and so forth. And let's go ahead and input a two pole circuit. Again, let's go ahead and use number five and load description water heater. Load KVA, five KVA or five KW. Number of poles is two. And load type is uh, type P. Of course, this, since this will be a residential, you can actually use the R, so it will do the, the, the proper uh, demand load calculations for you automatically. So let's say that, that this is the end of the, uh, the design. You go ahead and close and calculate. It will populate the panel board with all these circuits. Okay. As you can see in here, here's the first circuit that we input by uh, manually on the panel schedule. And circuit three uh, was the restroom receptacle 1.2. And then the, uh, the third circuit was a two pole circuit. And so automatically it divided the load for you on the two poles and indicated it's a two pole circuit and give you the circuit breaker associated with it and all the branch circuit. You notice that all these values here for the branch circuit and all the feeder are based on the National Electric Code uh, tables and requirement. Uh, and what you can get here by the, these particular three inputs is over 300 outputs. Uh, some of them are displayed in here, some of them are actually happening on the, in, the, in, the, in the background, and we take that information in the background and display it somewhere else. Uh, like this one here, particular one, 
when we say it's fed from MDP3, so it took all this information that's related to that point of connection between the two panels, the, the, the parent and the child, and transferred it to panel MDP uh, automatically for you and updated all the values associated with MDP. Uh, so next, ne next to that, if I go to MDP, you will see that panel three, LA3, is at the panel here on the circuit number three uh, as we connect it. And you will see that the main circuit breaker is 40. And then the circuit, uh, the branch circuit, which is the feeder of the panel, becomes a branch circuit on DP. So, and here's the characteristic of that particular circuit. And what happened uh, again in the background that it changed all the parameters and values associated with that particular addition to MDP. So the feeder got updated, uh, the conduit size, the ground, and all, the, all these values got updated for you automatically. So let's go back to panel LA3. We're gonna add this kind of a big load so we can see a big difference in the feeder size. Uh, the feeder right now is eight, number eight. Uh, in a three quarter of an inch, uh, a number eight uh, ground, and in a three quarter of an inch conduit. So I'm going to just add uh, like a 20 kW load uh, and select it to be two poles. And the load type Uh, let's say AC, calculate. Of course, you remember the easier way actually to go ahead to the uh, sorry to go to the wizard and do the same thing. Okay, so here it calculated the circuit for you. AC, uh, it's type AC. The circuit breaker that's required for that would be 250. It's quite a, a large one. Now, if we if we change that load to a heating load, see what happens to the circuit breaker. Calculate. The circuit breaker dropped almost to a half, but kept the conductor size to be the same. Because again, the NEC, when it's an AC or a motor load, you can actually design your circuit breaker up to 250% of the of the trip amp. Uh, I'm sorry, of the full load amp of the, uh, the that motor, uh, but and the conductor at 125% of the full load amp. When we change it to a heater, the, the breaker now is sized for a 125% uh, as well as the feeder or the branch circuit is for the same uh, ratio of 125. And it displayed the, 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 the ground for you uh, under the ground cell. It's a, it's a, a number six. Now, uh, the, so you can see that the changes happen instantly and uh, in, 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 in real uh, time uh, as, as, as we demonstrated. The, and also by changing the load uh, it, or added that load, it adjusted the size of the, uh, the feeder for that panel. And also the, the main change from 40, if you recall, to 150. If I go back to panel MDB, it is panel LA, the load got changed. The trip got changed, the feeder got changed, and also here got changed. So you can see that the 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 the, the changes got uh, any additional or deletion of the load. It, uh, it uh, showed that that change upstream, downstream, as it's related to that particular load or the the, the type of equipment. All right. So let's go back to panel LA three. Here is another beauty of uh, PowerCAC in terms of making changes. Let's say that after you filled up this panel with the loads, uh, you decided to change the voltage uh, instead of a 208 
whole single phase. You want to change it to 203 or I mean, 230 or 240 uh, single phase. All you have to do is to go back to the control panel, go to the panel module wizard, go to the panel board characteristics and change the 208 to 230. And close and calculate. Okay, so now the service or the uh, the panel voltage distribution voltage changed to, to 230 single phase and went ahead and adjusted all the related information related to the change and will reflect that change on upstream uh, as it goes to MDB. And you can see that some of your trip amps have changed. This here used to be 125 and now it's 110 and adjusted the circuit size for you and everything. So uh, again, with a click of a button, it took it all the way upstream, downstream and changed uh, and kept track of all that change for you. So you don't have to worry about whether you, you perform the change upstream or downstream. No, it will do it for you automatically. Uh, now, you can see again, because it's a single phase, the only occupied phases is A and C with, with load. So say again, you decided to change this into a three phase, you go back to the control panel, go to the wizard, and we're going to change this to 208, but this time it's going to be three phase. Close and calculate. Okay, now you see that the loads got scrambled between A, B, and C, but the, the circuit number did not change, so you don't have to go ahead and make that change on your drawings. Uh, the circuit stayed intact in terms of the circuit designation. Uh, all we've done is, uh, uh, is energize, if you will, uh, phase B and move that load to the appropriate phase uh, so you will have a balanced load and that sort of things. All right. Uh, so that's probably uh, some of the uh, functionality associated with the panel. The same thing is associated with the, uh, the MDPs and the DDP panels. Uh, there was only one this, the, uh, distinction between the, the two panels that on the panel type, which is the lighting and power uh, panels, uh, the, each row represents a single pole on the system. Meaning if you have a single pole circuit, it goes into the first uh, row. If you change it, if you have a two, it will go ahead and split it. If you remember, the load was 5 kVA, so we input 5 kVA in here, and when we selected two, it went ahead and divided that load between the two phases. Now that we have the capability to go three phase, see what's going to happen to the 20 kW, I can go ahead and select three. It took the 20 and divided by three and uh, listed the load associated with each one of these poles. So on a three pole circuit or a two pole circuit uh, on the panel, the lighting panel, uh, it will divide that by the number of poles and list either half or one third on each of the rows. Uh, but if we go to a distribution panel, let's go to the S panel here. Each row can be a single, two, or three poles. And it's still the same functionality. You don't have to divide it. You uh, input the, 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 the full load on the load KVA, and the system will actually divide it on the ABC phases according to the number of poles that you have selected. So the difference is, each row on the distribution panel represents a single or a two or a three pole, uh, three pole circuit. On the panel 
uh, each row is a single poll on the, the, on the particular panel. And the way we've done it this way, the reason we've done it this way is to really match the conventional way uh, that panels and distribution panels has been constructed, I guess, and displayed on the drawings. Uh, other functionalities uh, available uh, up here, you can actually go to the panel. Let's go back to our panel LA3. And you can, if you want to display the grid, you can do that. That becomes handy during the discussion between you and your colleagues. Uh, if they work in remotely, uh, you can uh, go to them and say, yeah, there's something wrong with your cell 22V uh, or uh, the value is not correct or something like that. It makes it a little bit easier to, 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 to have the discussion. And also, if you want to display the abbreviations used in the system, you can go ahead and click on the abbreviations and it will show you the abbreviations down here at the right uh, lower corner of the panel. If you want that panel also, if you want to feed through double logs, you can do that. Uh, or if you want to increase the number of polls to an 84, you can do that. And we did demo, uh, demonstrated that to you by just going to the control panel, go to the wizard, and then you can change the number of polls here to 84. But if you uh, having a, a, an existing condition or an existing uh, installation uh, that is prior to the code allowing us to go into a single enclosure and have up to 84 before that I think it was in 2012 I think or 2011 uh, when they allowed us to go to an 84 in a, in a single uh, single enclosure but if you have a prior installation that you have to go into two different panels you can always pair any panels you want to in here so if we want to pair panels 204 with 205 uh, open 204 And then go to the control panel and uh, we can go here to the wizard go to the lugs right now it's set on single we're going to go ahead and say it's a feed through and it will ask you which panel you wanted to link it to uh, I think we said 204 right 203 have 204, so let's say 205. Calculate. Oh, I'm sorry, 204 with 205. Okay, so open again 204. Go to the control panel, and we can also do it down here. Enclosure. Go to double. Enter. I thought it'd be easier to do it in here, but I guess it's not. I have to go. It's not displaying it for me. So no, okay, pick that up. <laughs> not sure why the system is freezing up. Okay, so do it again. Control panel, 204. Okay, now go to the wizard module. And in here, go to feed through. Select the panel, 205. Link. Invalid selection uh, because, yeah, what 
the, the, the project was set that 205 was already a child of MDB and you cannot do that. You have to free channel uh, panel 205. So let's go out of this, go to panel 205. Because panel 205 is connected to MDP, it says, well, you cannot actually join them together, so you need to take that out. And then let's go back to the control panel, to the wizard for the panel module, go back to lugs in here, say it's a feed through, select 205. Oops, no. Uh, well, let's do. I need to go to panel. Okay, go to panel 204. Control panel. Wizard. Down here. Change the logs to feed through. And now we can go ahead and connect it to 205 because we freed 205 and link the panel. See what's going to happen here now? It's going to join these two panels together and move the load uh, between the two. So the load type will remain uh, the same and it will be the total between the two panels. Okay, so if I go back to the control panel, you see that the two panels now, 204 and 205, became one panel. Uh, and the whole power distribution system got adjusted for that, and all the feeders and everything got adjusted for that particular change. Now, while we're doing all this in here, as I said, there's a lot of things happening in the background. The, the, the two main things that are happening in the background is the one line diagram. So if I go ahead and click on the one line in here, you will see uh, a true uh, representation of the one line diagram associated with this particular uh, project. So here is MDP. And from MDP, we have all these circuits connected to it. It's the two panels, I mean all the panels on the third floor. Now the two panels that we join together, you see that are listed Next, next to each other, 204 and 205. The circuit breaker got adjusted for it, and everything in the MDP got adjusted for that particular uh, load modification. Uh, on, uh, on here, you also see the designation for each of the uh, feeders. So panel 14 is uh, feeder number one, and it says, well, zero, zero, because there's actually no load so far uh, on it. Uh, panel LA3, it's 80, and the feeder is number two, is the number two, it's this feeder, uh, and so forth. Now, if we make any change, all this will get modified automatically for you. Uh, you can change the font size if you want to, uh, so let's make it 24 as an option. So it enlarged the fonts a little bit, uh, so it'd be legible and easier to read on the document. You can import that into AutoCAD and slap it on the drawings and you, you're done. Uh, now, when you make a change, uh, you would have to import it again back into uh, AutoCAD. As long as you keep the link there, uh, it will go ahead and update it uh, after you make the change and repath that to, to that particular uh, link. Uh, 
so let's go back to our uh, project here. Uh, the other thing is the, uh, the project uh, distribution tree. If I click on it, it shows you how the information is passing through or moving between the panels, the parent versus the child, uh, in terms of what equipment is connected to a panel, it shows you that, that path. And also shows you the panels that are not connected to the system, that you have developed these panels, but they're not connected to anything, which is panel S and panel two or three. So if I go back to here, to the panel, and I go to panel two or three, and you look to fed from, it says select. We haven't connected to anything yet, yet we filled up that panel. So it's a reminder for you that, hey, you have a panel sitting out there, it's not connected to anything. So we're gonna just go ahead and say, it's connected to uh, panel 201 and see what happens. So here's panel 201. It gives us the circuit that's available for us to connect it to. I'm gonna select number two, submit. So now if I go to the control panel, go to the project distribution tree, that panel vanished or is gone from the uh, unconnected uh, list. And it's connected to panel 201, here's panel 201, and here's the panel that we just connected to 203. Uh, and again, if I go to the one line diagram, you'll see that change happen automatically for you. So here is panel 201, panel 203 became a branch circuit on panel 201. Uh, of course, if I go ahead and move this from panel 201 to panel 305 or to MDP, the one line diagram will get adjusted automatically for you. Down here is the building equipment. It's, it's better for you to input the, the building equipment on the building equipment worksheet. Uh, it makes it makes your job actually a little bit easier uh, and much faster. So once you put it in here, you can do the same thing. You say, okay, I'm st this building equipment is connected to panel 204. But again, throughout the design, the mechanical changed their mind. You can come in here, change the KVA, it will adjust everything and keep the point connection. Now, if the point of connection is changed, that you've decided to balance your system or whatever reason uh, to move it from 204 to 201. All you have to do, go here and select 201. And again, we'll list for you the circuits available. Submit. Now it's gonna move this building equipment from 204 to uh, panel 201. Update the tree, update the one-line diagram, update your short circuit calculations, AIC ratings, and all that that is happening in the background. And now that we're talking about the AIC, let's go ahead and show you how PowerCalc does that. Here's the, uh, the button for the short circuit calculations. If you click on it, there are two methods for the uh, short circuit calculations. So if you go to the top of the sheet, uh, short circuit calculations, two methods, one is manual and one is automatic. Uh, if you click on automatic, uh, you can select the transformer and the line voltage, and then the system will go ahead and update that value and uh, uh, you know uh, do the calculations for you uh, automatically as you do your changes, as you do your design, it's all being uh, done uh, at the same time. Uh, or which uh, here in Florida, most of the time really, uh, like probably 90% of my projects here in Florida, that uh, it's manually input. Uh, all we get from the power company FBL is the uh, either the transformer lit through or the short circuit uh, current available uh, at the point of service. Uh, so this particular one here is set uh, on uh, 18,042. That's the value we got from FBL. And if you scroll a little bit to the right, you'll see that the secondary feeders 
that are feeding these panels. And then in here, it will show you the fault current amp available either at the transformer or at the panel. And then it broke the panel into a parent and a child, and then recommended to you the AIC rating. So on the first panel, the parent was 6675, the, the, uh, the child 65, I'm sorry, 6675, 6573. Uh, so uh, it went ahead and recommended the AIC ratings for you to be 10 and 10. Uh, let's see uh, if we take these two in here, they're almost the same value. Uh, and I will go ahead and change the feeder. So this one here, the feeder length uh, is, is 123, and it gave us a value of 4173 and recommended an AIC rating for that particular panel, the child panel, to be uh, five. Let's go ahead and change this, say, to five feet. Uh, and calculate. Go back to it. Here's the one that was five, and it was 41.73. The value increased to 74.49, and it came back and said, okay, your AIC rating for that particular panel is gonna be 10,000. So uh, the parameters that affects the, your, your, your AIC or the fault current is the voltage, the, uh, the conductor, uh, opacity, uh, the conductor size and the length of that particular conductor. So we increased, the, uh, actually reduced the, 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 the length of the conductor, so your fault current increased. Uh, why is that? Because now the amount of energy dissipated in that shorter run is uh, less than when it was 123, so of course the child panel will see more of that fault current at, the, at, at that particular panel. If we take it the other way from five, say, and it was 123, so we're gonna go to 300 feet, and then calculate. Let's go back to it again. Oops, too far. Here's a 300, there you see, by increasing the length of the conductor, the value has decreased. Why? Because the longer the conductor is, the more energy is gonna be dissipated uh, into that conductor before it reach the panel itself. So it dropped it down to 2567, and the panel AIC rating changed to five. Now, so as, as you make the change, again, the system is so dynamic, and it will realize when you made a change here or there, it will go ahead and take it upstream, downstream. This is good for existing, I mean, uh, for new de design. In the existing condition, you actually preset all that stuff in here, uh, all these values to match the existing condition. Uh, so, and then you can go back, come back to this particular sheet. If you have increased the load or decreased the load, uh, or the short circuit current that's available from the power company uh, is uh, higher or lower, it will tell you that the value that, that, that you preset on it, whether it's adequate or not. Uh, so for the existing condition, it will give you a flag, uh, but as you, if it's a new uh, design, it's always gonna give you the correct value for that particular design. Uh, I think with that, I've probably summarized everything that we have talked about uh, in the last four sessions of the webinar. Uh, and hopefully uh, that was, uh, I guess, uh, a good summary and give you some of the capability uh, that PowerCap is uh, or can provide you with during the design to uh, and demonstrate to you that you have saved a tremendous amount of time uh, by having a power distribution system that's talking to all of the components all at the same time. Uh, and it's only it starts with the three inputs per circuit and you don't have to worry about anything else after that. Everything is gonna be calculated for you. If any change is happening down the road uh, and you, everybody knows how much mechanical love to change, 
us or, uh, things on us at the last minute. Uh, again, all you have to do is to go to that particular uh, building equipment uh, worksheet. Uh, let's say they change the condensing unit here. So I go to it. Make the change, uh, whether it got larger or smaller, I go ahead and make the appropriate change, and then the system will update everything upstream, downstream automatically, and will reflect all these changes on the one line diagram and your false calculation, the AIC ratings, and everything automatically for you. Again, hopefully that was uh, helpful, uh, and if I will leave the, the floor now for any questions, uh, if anybody has a question. Hi, James. Uh, I got a question. Does PowerCal come play with the NEC 250.122 increase size? I think the question is, does PowerCal comply with uh, the, I guess, the grounding and bonding section 250, uh, article 122 uh, uh, increase in size? What, what does that mean? Uh, it's actually a good question here, and I didn't touch bases on that. There are two methods that the uh, power calc, when it calculates the ground conductor, there's the ground conductor, the equipment ground conductor, and then there is the, uh, the, the ground electrode uh, conductor. Uh, so uh, the equipment ground conductor is based on the overcurrent protection size. Uh, so it goes and match the, if it's a 30 M or 40 M or 50 M, it go ahead and match that value based on the NEC. And I think that's NEC table 250122. Uh, that is correct. And then the, if it's a, a service conductor or a uh, uh, separately driven uh, ground, it would be uh, based on NEC 250.66. But since the, uh, the, the, the ground conductor, a common ground conductor is based on the circuit breaker size, uh, but the circuit breaker determines that, that, that size, but also your uh, uh, conductor for the branch circuit, if it gets adjusted for uh, a voltage drop calculation that you need to increase that, that, that size, uh, you would have, if the, the, the branch circuit increased say by 20% or a, uh, 5%, you would have to use the same ratio and increase the, the ground conductor. And uh, I'll show you that a little bit here. Let's see, uh, take circuit 9, 11 for the range, uh, it's 60 amp. So the ground conductor based on the NEC is a number six, uh, is a number 10. Now, but say that you are not happy with the results for the voltage drop, uh, uh, what that means in here, is to maintain the 3% voltage drop, your circuit should not be more than 150 feet. But let's say that really it's more than 150 feet. So what are you gonna do? You have to go ahead and increase uh, either the conductor size. Uh, so let's go to the, uh, here, uh, control panel to the wizard and go uh, circuit number, uh, I already forgot circuit number, <laughs> let's go back. Uh, was it 19, I believe so the range nine and 11. So control panel, uh, the wizard, circuit nine, oh, not this one. the branch circuit wizard, circuit nine, so down circuit nine. Again, here's the circuit, this branch circuit uh, values as listed on the uh, panel. So I go here and say, okay, I'm gonna change the conductor from a number six, here it is. I'm gonna change it and make it two size up. So it's a number three, 
I'm going to go ahead and calculate. Now remember that the ground was number 10. Okay, so we changed the, 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 the conductor to a, a number three. And what happened is the ground conductor went from a number 10 to a number six. So it took the same ratio between the, the increase uh, of the conductor and applied that to the ground and displayed for you automatically and also adjusted the, uh, the conduit because it's a larger conductor. So now it's a quarter, a one and a quarter. And you can go with the number six, 295 feet. So uh, that also is not gonna give you more than 3% uh, voltage drop. So yes, it does comply with that particular uh, NEC requirement. And again, it does it for you automatically, uh, update all the values associated with it, upstream, downstream, whatever needs to be done. Hope that answered the question. Yes, it does, James. Uh, I got another one. How does power cal calculate demand loads? Demand loads. How does power cal do the or does the uh, the demand loads? After you input all your three inputs for circuit, remember you select the MAC load uh, from the pull down menu. The load in uh, I guess the NEC is broken down into three things. Either it's a resistive load, a motor load, or a lighting load. Uh, you have to keep track of these three in here in order for you to be able to apply the demand loads. And you have to keep them separate, otherwise it's gonna, the, 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 the job to demand the, the load uh, becomes very tedious. And what I found that most engineers, they don't really separate these type of loads and they just input them together, connect everything together, who cares, who doesn't, uh, because I am not going to go ahead and apply any demand load and that turns to be uh, that your system is way way over uh, designed and becomes very costly so by applying the demand load type I'm um, sorry by applying the demand the, the, the load type to each of the loads that you input uh, the, the, the power cap go ahead and tabulate all these loads by load type at the bottom left corner of the, uh, the, the panel board you see R, L, and R is the receptacles, L is for lighting, X, L, exterior lighting, site lighting. And then you have well, what I call them dummy power loads, uh, things that you don't know what they are, or you cannot associate them with a receptacle or a lighting, like a water heater. Uh, it would be a P. Uh, a, and then a transformer load. Uh, and that's just some of these here are given so you can actually separate the type of load, and that will give you again. Uh, uh, much better opportunity to analyze things. Uh, and then you have the motor load. So this particular project here, you see that this uh, column, this is for the connected load, it's 86.5, okay? By applying the NEC uh, standard demand loads, which is in here, in this column here, okay? The demand load dropped from, uh, the load dropped from 86 to 60. So there's almost like a 20, 25% reduction. So imagine you did not apply these demands, uh, your system would be 20 to 30% costly, if you will, and larger than what it, it should be. Uh, now, all these demand, the default demand by NEC can also be adjusted by the user. So if you decided that particular load number one, uh, the demand on is 80%, you can go ahead and put 80% and you calculate, it will change it and change it to, it dropped it down from 50, from 60 to 59. And again, once you did that, it adjusted the, the, the calculations, the amps, it adjusted the frame, adjusted the mains, adjusted the feeder, the conduits, the ground, whether it's a ground conductor or a ground electrode, all that got changed automatically for you, so you don't have to keep track of it. So the key, the key point here to apply the demand load that you have to separate the load uh, based on the NEC uh, load type, which I said it's lighting and receptacles, and then the, uh, uh, also actually, I'm sorry, the AC and uh, the, uh, 
the motor loads, okay? Uh, now, the AC, because uh, you have a heating cycle and a cooling cycle, you can demand these separately, depending on the largest of the two, you can, and then you can go ahead and take that particular load off the, uh, the system kind of thing. Uh, so, in here, on this particular panel, uh, we have, see, like in here, my design engineer forgot to go ahead and put a load type at the condensing unit, so when I looked at the load tabulation here, there is no AC. See, it only lists the heating of 11 kVA. All right, so let's go back, uh, which I need to go ahead and update my panel. Just go ahead and select this in here. And also notice that this, the, the trip amp is 80. Now, if I make this as an AC, calculate. Well, it kept the same value. I guess it's within the same parameter, okay? And then down here, it included central heating 11, cooling is 6.8. It took the largest of the two at 100% and the, the smallest at 30%. Again, I'll put that as a default because during the heating cycle, the fan, the blower fan is being used and I estimated it about to be 30%. You as the design engineer of record, if you don't want that or you want it to be less, you can go ahead and put 10%, calculate, and voila, everything got changed. Uh, so now the demand went down from 10, went down to point, uh, I'm sorry, it went down from uh, 70, it'd be uh, what? Eight times three is almost 24, 2.4 to a 0.7 uh, demand. So the key point here for the for the demand calculations uh, uh, is really describe the type of load and use these macros that are associated with with the program, and you you, you can have a most cost efficient and appropriate design that will meet. Uh, the your design requirement without going way uh, overboard and over design or under design. Any other question? Thank you, James. You're welcome. Okay, so with this here, uh, we'll close this session, and thank thank you everybody uh, for showing up today and uh, for your participation. And please, if you see anything uh, or you want us to uh, make modification uh, to some of the calculations, uh, or you see anything that we can add to improve the process, I would appreciate an input from everybody at any time. Uh, just send us your, your uh, request and we'll take closely into it. And the, uh, I would also ask everybody to go to our website and download the free trial for 30 days uh, and really use it on a project, maybe a small, simple project, and you will see a big difference in your process uh, and in the production. Uh, it really matches most of the process uh, uh, in any of the, the engineering companies. And everything that I have here really is based on the core of engineering process. So. Uh, and an industry standard. Uh, so it's not gonna be a, a quite a change or there's a big learning curve. Uh, if you know how to input three inputs, that's all what you need to do. Uh, and then the system will calculate everything for you uh, precisely, accurately, and in much, much less time. So until the next time, thank you very much and goodbye.